Hey, Jake. Not now, John. Hey, Jake. Damn it! Wait a minute. Hey, Jake. Damn it! Wait a minute. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonya asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Couldn't you just stop working for O'Leary? Yeah, I guess I could. Could you tell me where O'Leary's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday. And being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake. Are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Have you noticed anything strange about Sonia? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Well, I'll see you tonight. See you there. Ronald, the break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Not then. Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in that dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, 
O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right. You stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Let it got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed. bit too high to climb if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. If I'm right, could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? If only I could reach that box. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Maybe it leads to the basement. Ha <laughs> Stupid coyote! <laughs> Something tells me you'll <laughs> notice me no matter how stealthy I was. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? I need your brute force, Jake. Uh, what's wrong? Is the little kitten too, uh... And your silence.
These are questions we only ask ourselves when it's far too late. Expecting some frozen bodies. Good thing the TV was louder. Are they carpeting the floors? some frozen bodies. Hmm. Uh, 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 
The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. so many bets on a single baseball game. Could that be Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? the incorruptible police commissioner? I sighed in relief. O'Leary had tried to buy Smirnoff on several occasions, but failed. Luckily, O'Leary had nothing on him, or me. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. 
He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. In Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20,000 in a drawer. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute, did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. 
Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Sixteen days until the fight. A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Hmm... Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranks. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him sniffing around. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why?
Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, the rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Luckily or not, files in through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we, or are we not, exemplary workers? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, very well. Uh, but why are you... Shh. Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, th th three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? No, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. O'Leary, the police have surrounded <laughs> You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, but why are you... Shh. Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three. Th 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> no, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I... That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job and you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. 
She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? Leave him alone, O'Leary. No one deserves to die. Not even... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you do. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> he was my cousin. I... That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? <laughs> Son of a bitch. I didn't want to. It was his idea. Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... Calm down now. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I do anything to protect them. The second principle... I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time I got someone killed, even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I... no, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy! No. It's not polite! Sorry. We're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story.
What? Just where do you think you're going, putty cats? <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything, th if anything threatens either of these two principles, I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> you should have seen his face. It's but interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But it's you stop. By then? I was adamant about buying a fish. But, but first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. In 
case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. Larry's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. What? Me? No way! 
You did what? Colbert? When? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, remember? When I called you on the phone. Don't you remember that cocky drunk guy? Uh, no. He kept bragging about how he was banging another guy's wife. Oh? Oh yeah! Weird times, huh? Yeah. And you congratulated me for finding Yale and saving your life. Several times! Then I asked you if O'Leary would thank me somehow. And I thought it was a very reasonable assumption. And then you told me to come here to ask the boss himself. Yeah! I think you deserve it! Right, Desmond? Oh, black sad, black sad, black sad. Thank you. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from Wilson. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well, it made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. I want to bet it all on the fight. Ah, so you're a gambler after all. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. I guess, if you say so. Same difference. Anyway, go ahead. Place your bet. I bet it all on Yale. <laughs> oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? We cats and wolves hunt at night. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the Fall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. <laughs> nah, not that. Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. God, that's worse. He wants him alive! <sighs> I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate.
Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. Well, Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Cooperate with law enforcement. All you have to do is talk. <laughs> I like to speak through my actions, but still, could you be more specific? Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Coming! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so... Make them count? We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. We know you smuggle contraband during your international tournaments. Oh, really? Are you sure? Like, what exactly? Hmm. <laughs> I think she called my bluff. Or did she? Should I follow through or say I was kidding? I'm convinced you're part of a dangerous international network that smuggles... champies. <laughs> For a moment there I thought you were serious. Glad to see the FBI has a sense of humor. You've got my full attention now. We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? The thing is, well... <laughs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character could only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. Anyway, at least now I know why you mentioned the rigged games. I can't blame you, Mr. Blackmore. I understand why I seem suspect. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow. Your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too. Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. Anyway, now I get why you brought up the rigged games and your obsession with O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. We've got reason to believe he's working with the Chicago mob. This isn't just illegal gambling anymore. It's organized crime. I think I know where you're going with this. Smuggling champies. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? I 
I'm sure you're aware that we could end your career if what we know goes public. But no one wants that to happen, right? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir? <laughs> the pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Want to know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me. If I had the slightest... Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? America's sweetheart gave you her cigarette? Dear God, she has the hots for you! I can't believe you said good old weekly to investigate that stupid walrus while you were hanging out with Helen Moore herself! So, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news. But I happen to also have a pla- uh. Black Sad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Black Sad. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Colbert. My husband woke me up this morning with roses and breakfast in bed. He said he had a scare last night, although he won't give me any details, and that he's been thinking about me ever since. He wants to take me to Niagara Falls for a second honeymoon. <laughs> That's nice, but I don't know why you're thanking me. Are you kidding? Remember how I doubted him, but you made me change my mind? If he had suggested to take me to Niagara Falls when I still suspected him, I would have thought it was just a cover. Or worse still, a way to clean his conscience. Well, I only did my job as honestly as I could. Enjoy your marriage. I hope you and your husband are happy. Uh, but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Uh, 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 Come on, spit it out. I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. 
I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. Huh. And then take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No? Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. John Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. They beat me up once. What's to say they won't do it again? Dang. What about your boss, Cassidy? Didn't he do nothing? Well, let's just say he's taking care of it. Well then, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Be thankful you ain't in Texas. Sure enough, you'd have yourself a hole in the head, boy. I'll pray to our Lord Jesus so those bastards get what they deserve and you get your honor back. Now, did you know nothing heals a wound like booze? One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, the hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? 
You have a good evening, sir. Wait, uh... The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him, and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No! Please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Damn, sure enough, Boo's put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all, and that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. What do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec. I got it. I just, just put it over. over I think it's, uh, I'll be right back. Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there? Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there?
No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me a receipt. Who do you think I am? Wait, well, I'm, I'm, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just I put it over, over, I think he's, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there? Not even a Bible. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me a receipt. Who do you think I am? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just I put it over, over. I think it's, uh, I'll be right back. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no Find him. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. Knowing Farnham, the owner of this bra only came here for business. <laughs> It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. I 
I'll be damned. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. <laughs> Yes, sir. New York City. With this and that hat, I'll really look the part. <laughs> anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassie. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend, Fano. Am I right? Sure enough, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy's a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. I would if I had a gun on me, but I don't. Are you kidding me? An unarmed Texan? Just pulling your leg, Cassidy. Take care of my girl, you hear? <laughs> All right, I was starting to get antsy. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. 
You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth is that our friend Bottom owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly, eh, no. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? The worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quint, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. There's a 
poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. But she's in the rehab clinic now, hooked on a tranquilizer and all that. That's it, tranquilizer. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham! Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm. Yeah, so how can I be of help? Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that O'Leary fella. Oh, huh. one would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Ever since the sport got put on TV, people want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. A bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when their managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen. I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit, even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit, even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. something. I don't know how you deal with all of that. All oh, boys. Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of you girls. 
Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. lay a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well... <laughs> let's just say... Some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnum? That damn eagle represents the lowest scum of our society. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince. Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. Huh. <laughs> Washing up. It's a deal. <laughs> and good call, Fun. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again, or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my day. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat.
likes that. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. It was like this when I got here. Did you touch or move anything in here? Only the phone. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this. Had you already finished looking through these papers? I wish. Well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. Bingo. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. What are you doing? Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. Not that I suspected otherwise, but it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Hmm. Looks like the burglar isn't interested in bureaucracy. Did they take anything? No. Although... When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. I'd rather not go through that again. That's too bad. It looks like they took it. Is this yours? Mm, I think it belongs to the new cleaning lady. Mary just wasn't working out, so she left. Clarice Freeman? Yes. You think she did this?
pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding?
footprints don't match. Or if O'Leary killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Right here, please. Could be a knife wound. The murder was brutal. I can just picture her saying, Honey, I found a job. We're finally gonna make ends meet. Hmm. I want you to call the police, son, and then go straight to a friend's house. Don't even think about going home and definitely don't come back here. I'm... I'm staying at a friend's house. I haven't even set foot in my father's place yet. Good. Do you have the keys? If the murderer didn't find what he was looking for, that might be his next stop. If he hasn't been there yet. For once I had the keys to the place, which meant I wouldn't have to use my lockpicks or... Doesn't look like anyone picked the lock.
Look at that. The guy sure had good taste. As I glanced at the telephone, I remembered the weekly password for O'Leary's illegal gambling operation. Even though I had rejected his reward for finding Yale, and had chosen to bet it all on Yale, I had managed to make my own dirty money by ratting out the eagle pimp during our poker game. How much damage can that have been? Yes. Wild strawberries. Welcome, sir. May I ask for the beneficiary of your bet? I'd like to bet on Sonia Dunn's behalf. Hmm. Event? Stone versus Yale. Madison Square Garden. Got it. Amount? Five thousand dollars. Winner? Yale wins. Place of delivery. I'd seen several locations written out in O'Leary's basement, but I could only remember one, courtesy of my new matchbox, La Iguana Pool Room. All right, sir. Good afternoon. It's hard to believe that a pair of boxing fists could play something like this, although I'm sure he had the lungs for it. It looks like Dunn had already begun to move his things. Dunn? Thorpe? Hmm. No idea. And these two? They look familiar. Wasn't Dunn's nickname The Quiet Lynx? I'd swear I saw that on a poster at the gym. Ready-made meals on airplane trays in front of the TV. Who would have thought we'd end up eating like this? Dunn died four days ago. And that lettuce still looks okay. Sardines. It's been open for a few hours. course. Now I see how Dunn bought the apartment he was going to share with Mary. This place has to be empty in two weeks for the new owners. I wonder if Sonia knows about this.
pretty clear that the burglar came by the house before heading to the gym, which means he probably didn't find what he was looking for in here. You still looked at her every morning, so many years later, with a new love? Maybe we don't need to forget. Maybe pain just transforms into, I don't know, something. Another empty closet. This is too private. Is this how he got in? Elaine. I think that was Dunn's wife's name, according to Jake. Wow. Could Dunn really afford such luxuries? Or did he only want to impress Mary? Could this be the origin of Sonia's interest in business management? What's this doing here? No matter how hard I look, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to talk with Sonia. And maybe with her uncle, Tim. It brings back... I don't know. Good memories? An optimist, are we? It's like remembering the last day of summer. Scenes full of joy. Picturesque landscapes. And yet... The light is faint and the air is still, the calm before the storm. I know that feeling. I figured that much. I can see it in your eyes. We met in the army. <laughs> we were all professional athletes. They called us the Olympic Five. Who's the guy on the right? Angus Mitchell. Our combat medic, and a doctor with the New York Warriors. It was Spanow who got him assigned to our platoon. Who's the guy on the left? Ah, 
Viktor Sukovsky, the athlete. You've probably heard of his medals. Hey, isn't that Craig Spano? The guy on the Morley's billboards? Yes, indeed. Our captain. He was the oldest, after all. And star of the New York Warriors. <laughs> he was an orphan, you know. But he loved the sport so much that he said baseball was his family. He was the one who had Mitchell assigned to our platoon. Was Dunn already boxing? Yes, he was. I had already seen him fight before I even met him. He was as humble in the ring as he was in life. He'd always let his rivals take the initiative. I remember how he barely dodged the blows. If you didn't look at his feet, it seemed like he wasn't even moving. And the footwork? Pure dancing. You could almost hear the music. The song would play until his opponent was exhausted. Then came the drum roll, followed by Dunn's victory by KO. What about you? I had just signed with the Milestones. I hadn't even played my first game, but people said I had a bright future ahead of me. But the war got in the way of that bright future. Huh? No, I made it big when I came back. Best time of my life. Don't you remember that cop at the hospital? The one who let me in in exchange for an autograph? Trust me. Nobody calls you Iron Arm if you're just sitting on the bench. Who would have thought that I'd end up becoming Tim Iron Legs Thorpe? What happened? I fought the Nazis for two years, up there in the sky, over Europe. And I never set foot in a field hospital. Three years later, I crossed the street without looking. And look at me now. What happened to all of them? Zukovsky died the same day the injured Dunn. Dunn received an honorable discharge and came home. He quit boxing and opened his gym. Mitchell was redeployed to a field hospital. Spano and I continued in the same unit, but nothing was ever the same. You see what I meant with the last day of summer. And after the war? Well, who the hell cares? I do. What happened to Mitchell after the war? Mitchell? Who knows? We lost touch. I hope he's doing well. I think I saw Mitchell not too long ago, but I can't remember where. Seriously? Please try to remember. I'd love to hear from him again. I'll do my best. What happened to Spano? Well, you've seen the billboards. He made it big time. When I was forced to retire, I got him some advertising deals. That's how I founded this agency. But then, something happened to him. He became sullen. He fell out of shape, and slowly but surely, lost touch with reality. He withdrew from public life and broke off our friendship. Haven't heard from him in, uh, what, three years? And believe me, I've tried to contact him. You think Spano might have been involved in Dunn's death? Spano? No way. He and Dunn were always... Well, Spano's changed so much that it's hard to say. Allow me to double your wage. You have to find the murderer. Maybe Dunn stayed in touch with Mitchell or Spano. Maybe even with both. But he never told me anything. Maybe Sonia knows. I doubt it. But that's not the only question I've got for her. May I?
Was your father still in... Have you ever wished you'd never been born? What? Many times. Too many. Then we're both in the same boat. First time was right after moving to New York. I hated my mother. She was the reason we moved from the countryside and the smell of freshly mowed grass to this dirty city and the smell of medicine. Her medicine. The second time was after she died. I hated myself for having hated her before. For not having loved her enough. The third time was when my father shut himself off. I hated him for that. For abandoning me. For giving in to the booze. Now he's dead, so... Take a guess. You've realized just how much you really loved him. I guess so. But that's not the worst of it. The problem is I don't know how to live without hating him. Over the last few years, everything I've done was meant to push my father far away. To avoid being like him. To avoid making his same mistakes. Without him, I just don't know who I am. And you won't even let me hate Bobby. Which might actually help me. The more you hate, the worse you feel. You think I don't know that? I need someone to blame. Without that someone, I have only myself to hate. What if I don't find the person who did this? We'll have to wait and see. But I believe you will. You've already come so far. I'm sorry I haven't been a little more... grateful. In any case, you shouldn't hate yourself. You are... No, you have such good qualities. You're as smart as you are kind. That's what my father used to say. Why would you think that? You try too hard to hide the letter, but I'm a detective. Anyway, can we just drop the subject? Did you go to my father's apartment? Yes. The thief went there before coming to the gym, which leads me to believe he didn't find what he was looking for. And what was he looking for? That's what I intend to find out, with your help. Your father sold his apartment. The new owners move in in two weeks. What? I'm sorry. I think he used the money to buy a new place with Mary Purnell. You'll have to talk to her sooner or later. My father? Even now, he finds new ways to make me hate him. I found a picture taken during the war. <laughs> the Olympic Five. Did you meet any of them, besides your father and uncle? Well, Uncle Tim actually isn't my uncle. No? He and my father loved each other like brothers. Did he tell you that he saved his life? Your father saved Thorpe? They were flying over Brittany in a three-unit fighter plane. Zukovsky was the pilot, my father was the co-pilot, and my uncle manned the machine gun. Suddenly, enemy fire killed Zukovsky and injured my father, which is why he never boxed again. My uncle jumped out of the gun turret, ran to the cockpit, and managed to pilot the plane to safety. Oh, the times my father told me that story. And now... Did you ever meet Mitchell, the doctor? Mitchell? The lizard? No, never. Why? Oh, nothing. I think I've seen him somewhere. Did you ever meet Spano? What can you tell me about him? I think I saw him once, but 
I was just a little girl. I think my uncle turned him into a star. It was a long time ago. I found a baseball glove with Spano's autograph in your room. Oh, I've never seen it. My father must have put it there. Although I don't remember him having a signed glove. I saw your old room. That's embarrassing. Stop, or I'll end up hating you. It's odd that there are practically no toys or memories of your childhood in the room, except for a small music box. That box? It might just be my last happy memory. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates. So my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a a tire swing. X marks the spot, so I, I dug to find my treasure. I loved the music it played, the ballerina and the little secret compartment. Oh, the secrets I kept in there. I think it's the first time I heard you call your father, Daddy. Uh, really? Did the Abacus inspire you to dabble in finances? The most useful gift anybody has ever given me. A gift from your mother? From my Uncle Tim. He used to say that in this day and age, a woman should know how to count. My father didn't agree, but he didn't oppose it either. People thought he was a liberal because of his attitude towards racial issues. But at home, things were different. I'm also a fan of Frank Papalia. Oh yeah, the poster. I only liked him because my father thought he was too modern. Your dad had great taste in music. So, better taste than I had as a child? Well, now you've put me on the spot. You don't know how happy that makes me. Are you cold? A little. Maybe I should go. Anyway. Thanks for the company. Sonia, don't come back to the gym, okay? I told you, it's dangerous. Aren't you coming? I knew I was looking at a solution, but what exactly needed solving? Maybe Dunn used the same hiding place once more. I'll never understand why detectives and criminals bluster while they fight each other in the pictures. What a waste of breath, focus, and energy. It's 
not the lack of credibility in the screenplay that bothers me. Plus, it's actually pretty handy. When a clerk talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. And if he doesn't even say, help me please, What did they say? Nothing serious. I lost another one of my nine lives. Oh, this hurts. Got many left? I'm in the red. He hasn't woken up yet? Nope. We're gonna be here a while. Vulpine. Seven letters. Cunning? C-U-N-N-I-N-G. It fits. I hope it doesn't throw anything off. Yep, looks like you were right with cunning. What are you looking for? Nothing. Will he live? He'll live. So what have you found out? Randall Lee. Apparently in love with our penitentiary system, judging by the frequency of his visits. Theft, assault, extortion, you know, minor things of the sort. Any partners? Always works alone. He's never ratted out his employers, provided they exist. Did you find anything? Is this our man? Do you have proof? Hmm. Looks like we know who tore his pants following Clarice Freeman up to the rooftop. His pants have a tear in them. I found a piece of that same fabric at the gym, on the stairs that lead to the rooftop where we found the second body. Makes sense, but... How many pairs of ripped pants are walking around New York City? <laughs> I don't call that evidence. The guy who broke into the gym in Dunn's place has a thing for sardines. Did you smell his breath? Right, because there's only one sardine fanatic on this side of the Hudson. I need something more.
I saw footprints from those very same shoes next to both the gym murders. Unless you're telling me that shoe was a limited edition, I'm gonna need something else. One of the thugs that attacked me the other night had a snout just like his. I'm sorry, but you can't incriminate someone based solely on species. What else you got? What more do you need? I've given you four pieces of evidence. None of which are conclusive. He tried to throw me off the rooftop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He's our man. No, he's not our man. Make up your mind. He's just a puppet. Someone is pulling his strings. Hmm. Could it be Yale? He's hiding something for sure. But I don't think he did it. By the way, was he discharged? His room is empty. They let him out yesterday. He's in police custody now. You can tell he's an athlete. Made quite the comeback. Anyone else would have taken ten times as long. Anyway, he better be fine. You know they've ordered me to escort him to Madison Square Garden on the day of the fight. That's the first I hear of it. Quick, what do you want? Good cop or bad cop? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Good thing someone took out the trash. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lee. I assume you're aware that you're about to be accused of murder, and that thanks to the witness testimonies of Mr. Blacksad and Miss Dunn, your future is not looking too good. Go to hell, you dog. If I choked you with a pillow, nobody would know. You should already be dead. Blacksad, stay out of this. Remember who's the cop here. Maybe we can offer you a deal. We know someone hired you to kill Joe Dunn and Clarice Freeman. What do you have to say? I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. You know, I'm really good at planting false evidence. Shut up or I'll kick you out. If you tell us who hired you, will help you. What can you offer me? How much is your life worth to you? Don't pay attention to him, Mr. Lee. We aren't vigilantes. But we can significantly reduce your sentence. <coughs> That's a start, but it's not good enough. I want in on the witness protection program. New city, new job. New identity. And a clean police record. That's the only way I'll talk. Meanwhile, I want police protection 24-7. I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out!
Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone. So I went back to my previous lead. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Hello, Smirnoff residents. Your dad! No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Ben got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm -hmm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm -hmm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right. Be some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's Diner just four days before his death. Get out of here, pussy! How is Mary? Playing the sad little victim at home. And here I am, up to my neck! What the hell do you care, anyway? Beat it! It might have been easier to slap the information out of him, but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care! Come on, spit it out! I'm John H. Blackmore, public health inspector. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. After you answer my questions. Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Don had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Don said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he would move into his place. Wait a minute! What does public health services have to do with that shit?
the chimp died of food poisoning. But wait! He... he didn't even eat! Which is even worse. Dan had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be? If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple.